let me take a look at where jiu-jitsu players get wrestling wrong most in competitions and the positions that you'd like it to be in. And this week will be from standing, and then on Sunday we'll do, uh, we'll do stuff from the ground. Um, so the first thing I want to explain um, is that um, wrestling is very much like jiu-jitsu in that there's no, there's no technique. If you think of it as techniques, you will fail. <laughs> there's only um, things that happen in a series of events. Does that make sense? So like if, you, if I go for a technique and don't get it, then that's the end of that technique, right? What we're going to build today is a series of events around two positions. So that means that you can go for something, it might not work, but that brings you into the next part of the series of events, which brings you into the next part. It's the same thing you see, uh, this happens a lot when you see white belt clown, one guy grabs a hold of a guillotine and just can't get it, just can't get it, just can't get it, and then he gives up and goes, fine, have me then. You know? <laughs> It, it, it's about one thing moving on to the next thing, moving on to the next thing. And, that's, and it's more important in wrestling, in my opinion, that we look at things as a series of events. Because um, in jiu-jitsu there are places where you can stop and chill and take a break. You can have close guard and break someone's posture. If you want, you can stay there for a second or two. That, that situation will never occur in wrestling. Um, the second thing is that... Um, Wrestling is very much a sport for like strong, athletic, agile, flexible people, and I have none of those things. <laughs> so all we're, all we're going to go through today, as we go through the concepts, is all the dirty tricks, basically, in terms of how to how to get this stuff against someone who is will inevitably be younger, fitter, stronger, and more flexible and agile, and all the rest of it. So the first thing I want to go over is uh, pommeling. You got a pommeling here. Yeah, so, this is a classic wrestling position, we'll be stood up straight, our hips will be back a little bit. When we do it, I'm going to drill it this way as well. I want him to be trying to carry my weight, I want him to be trying to push his weight onto me, let's make it a little bit real. And um, the basic pummeling exercise is this, I have an underhook, he also has an underhook. Anytime I'm under the armpit, that's called an underhook. Anytime I'm over the top of the arm, that's called an overhook. So we both have an underhook and an overhook. The goal in wrestling always is to get to the hips. So same, a double leg takedown isn't about getting the legs, it's about getting the hips. So what I'm trying to do is create a situation where, the, oh yeah, where I get double on the hooks and this gives me access to his hips. Yeah? Double under hooks are king in wrestling. So what will often happen is we end up in this position, under, but as I make the space to try and get my other underhook in, I'm leaving space for him to get his in. And now we're here. And now I try again. And I'm trying to make space. He's making space too. And we end up in this. And we'll drill this just quickly as an exercise. Just about 50%. We're not sparring yet. But don't just do this. Don't make it a dance. This is not pummeling. This is pummeling. We're moving around. We're trying to break each other's base. Don't pummel like it's a dance, put 50% into it, it's not sparring yet. So, um, and that's it. Today in particular, if we can try and pair ourselves with people that are similar heights at least, um, that would be awesome. Yes, yeah, so let's get to it, one, two, three. Um, so, <laughs> the next thing I want to go over in terms of underhooks and overhooks is that, I just said underhooks are king, right? There are things you can do with overhooks too, but it's going to depend entirely on how much the other guy fucked up already. Yeah? So, for example, this is an underhook. Push it. This is also an underhook. Right? This underhook gives me power. This gives me the ability to, to impact him and to move him in the way that I want. You see, I'm, I'm as high as I can be under his armpit. I'm cupping over the top of his shoulder and I'm leaving no space here for him to I'm leaving no space for him to try and pummel back in. If I let this just fall loose, if I just do that, this is no overhook it, whizzer it, whizzer it tight. Yeah. This is no longer an underhook for me, this is an overhook for him. Does that make sense? Yeah. This is an offensive weapon that he can use, this is an offensive weapon that I can use. A good habit to get into when you're fighting underhooks and overhooks, jiu-jitsu and wrestling, is that any time an underhook goes in, whizzle it. Just wrap your arm around it. And that's important for two reasons. Because if that's not there, if he just puts his hand over my back, 
back taking jiu-jitsu. If anyone ever gets here on you in wrestling, you'll go for a ride. <laughs> yeah? So literally the unhook gets in, where's the straight line? Boom. Yeah. So remember, when you now we'll go back to pummeling, but this time what I want you to focus on is getting your underhook as high as possible and really being able to impact that. So see how his shoulder's coming up high? This gives me an, an immense amount of control. Also stops him being able to whiz me. Yeah, so he can put his arm there to stop me taking the back, but that's about all it's, all it's good for. But from here, I've got a stunning amount of control. I can drag him, I can knee back, I can drop, I can pull him down. It's all kinds of things. So underhooks are not equal. If my underhook is weak, it's not my underhook, it's his overhook. Does that make sense? All right, so go back to pummeling, and this time when you get your... I'll explain this concept now as we move on to this technique, because this concept is going to flow through everything we do today. And the concept is um, <coughs> adding weaponry to. I've been teaching it. I've been teaching this quite a bit recently. Um, a lot of people have been asking me to explain the concept. I still haven't found a really good way of explaining what I mean, <laughs> unfortunately. But um, there are things we can change and things we can't change. Joe will always have a height advantage over me. He will always have better reach. Rhino will always be stronger than me. Um, Steve will always be heavier than me. <laughs> so these are, these are physical dimensions which matter, they make a huge difference, um, and I can't change them. If I'm sparring with Steve and I'm not, he's always heavier than me. If I'm sparring with Rhino, he's always stronger than me, you're always taller than me. These are things we can't change. The only thing, so it's like a game of top trumps. Does anyone, does anyone not remember top trumps? Good. So you know you had, you'd have a character that would be like strength 99 and and uh, magic too, whatever. Um, and those things on those cards can't change. There is one thing that we can change in our fight though, and that is the amount of weapons that we commit to a particular move. And that, um, worry again. So, if you can spawn me back. So, for a Jiu Jitsu example, um, so the bread cut choke. So, here, Dean's stronger than me, and he's bigger than me, and he's in better shape. I can't win this grip fight here. Strength 100, strength 50. Right? I can't win this. Because if, if we go to grip fight, this is something I can't win. What I can do, and this is the point I'm trying to make, is I can add more weapons. Now I can win this grip fight. There's the bread catch Same thing from the Kimura position. I get stuck here with loads of big strong guys. I, it's just not, I can't change my strength in this moment, I can't change my size in this moment, that, that's, I'm losing this. But what I can do is add more weapons. So I've got, I've got a nice pointy elbow here, I can dig that into his ribs and take the kimura. <laughs> in wrestling this is really, really important. If you try and do something without adding maximum weaponry factor to it, that's where it will go wrong. So the next thing I want us to focus on on the other books is this, oh no, sorry, um, is this. So, we already know a high underhook is better than a low underhook. The next thing with Marcel nearly spoiled the surprise is your head position. So my weapons are my arms and hands, my legs and feet, my posture, i.e. how I'm standing, how much weight I'm putting on someone, but my first and best weapon in wrestling at any time is my forehead. This is the thing that will get you more techniques finished than anything else. Where I have my underhook, I always want my forehead on the inside. And I don't just want it, this isn't just a principle of it being that side or that side. The reason I want it here is to add weaponry factor to it. Because I can jam it into his, I can jam it into his jawbone. And I'm not even doing that very well. Turn back into it. I'm using almost no power. But you can't, he can't turn back into me and he can't affect my underhook. Because I've, I've just added another weapon. And he's only got one. Does that make sense? So now, this will be immensely more difficult, so loosen it up. If you're going 50% before, take it down to 20, 25%. Are you waving at me? Or um, uh, there's a fly in there. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to ask a question as well, but after you've finished. Yeah. But if you were um, if you were going at 50% before, go down to 25, and now start pummeling. Stop trying to work, And as you get it under the Is that cool? Yeah. I was just going to ask about that hip, the hips, because you said move the hips away. Yeah. And you're still doing the hips away, but with your head. Um, once I'm here, I can bring my hips right yeah, in. Okay. He, he, there's no, 
he can't pose a threat to my right, hips. Right. If I'm here and I stand up straight, grab my hips. Right. You can still you can still get your hips taken from you without two underhooks. It, it, it can still happen. Sure. Yeah. So here, hips up. Always remember, when I'm here. If I'm here, now my hips are safe. Now I can start driving in. Got it. Yeah. Good question. Um, everyone good? One, two, three. So this is the. Remember we talked about techniques. And we talked about a series of events. This is the start of a typical series of events that will happen. Yeah. So it's very, very common to get here. Now you already know. High under the head to the same side, head under the jawbone. So what happens if Dean brings his head back to the other side? I've gone. All, I've, all that's happened is that we've gone back one in my series of events. So now I go forward one in the series of events. He brings his head back again. Maybe he pummels. So I'm back in my series of events. I need to get back to here. Then I need to get to here. You see what I'm saying? It's just it's a flow. It will go backwards and forwards. It's not going to be as simple as underhook, come to the side. That will never ever happen in wrestling. It will be this flow. We'll be going backwards and forwards. He might get his underhook back, he might get double unders, I then have to get one back, I then have to get round to the side and bring his head back out, and then have to get back out. But I know which way I want to go. This is what I'm this is the point that I'm hoping you'll all get to know. I know which way I want this series of events to go. And if I have to take a step back every once in a while, great. I know what the next step forward is, yeah? Cool, so we end up here. And this might take five seconds or it might take a minute, but we end up here. Now at this stage, you notice I'm pretty much um, sideways with him and almost in like a T-shape. Yeah, our feet are, should be forming some kind of T-shape. If I'm under his jawbone, it's very difficult for him to put his hips back. Try and get your hips away from me. It's hard. If I'm not there, get your hips away from me. Then I don't really have much. And this is what I'm saying. Like I see people get there and go, oh, I've, got, I've got the high end, I've got this. Then you don't have anything yet because you still don't have the hips. So, I'm here now. His hips should, it should be very difficult for him to get his hips away from me. We're going to start with our next series of events, which, is from, which happens from here. And it's a series of takedowns that will happen. So the simplest one is this. Sometimes we'll be hand fighting here, he won't just have his hand. So yeah, we'll be hand fighting, it won't matter. So as long as I keep this in, I'm good. And at some point I'm going to make a connection around his hips. Remember I said it's all about the hips? Keep this connection around his hips. Doesn't matter if his arm's in. If his arm's in, it's the same thing. That and that, it won't matter. Ideally you'll get past the arm and you'll have this. And can you see how his back's arching somewhat? Because this is a fixed point, it's fixed to my hip. What I'm trying to do is, I'm not just holding him, I'm connecting him to my hip. And this is a fixed point as well, he can't bring his jaw down either. So what I'm going to do, we'll do the nice version of this first and then we'll do the nasty version. What I'm going to do is keep this in and I'm going to keep that arch going to the point where he has to fall. My legs are going to be pinched around his, or at least either side. So, turn, 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 turn. So very good. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. So the crucial points here are I have my underhook. I've already established this position. The series of events took me to this place. Now his hips are close enough. I can grab them and lock them into mine. I'm not just holding them in place, I'm literally locking them to me. And now with my head, turn, 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 turn. And you hear that you don't have to be strictly on the jawbone. I'm probably going to be somewhere just under his neck here, like almost listening to his heartbeat. And then just fold him over nice and easy. And just let your partner fall. Take, take him to the point where you've broken their balance, in fact, because there's a lot of us. Take him to the point where you've broken their balance, and when they say you've broken my balance, just lift them back up, because I don't think we've all got space to be falling. Is that cool? Yes. Yeah. Okay, one, two, three. Um, <coughs> but, do you know when we were talking about adding in weapon? So I've already got, I've already got, any, so I've got a high underhook. So my posture is better than his. I've got control of his head. I'm stopping and turning in. Now I've got control of his hips, and I can fold him, and, th and that will work. But why not add in more weapons and make this a bit cooler? 
So what we're going to do is I'm going to add my hips into the mix. And all we're going to do is literally the exact same folding process, but once I get to my, once I've got I'm about halfway to getting his balance, I'm going to bang my hips in. And, and this is roughly what it looks like, because that doesn't look cool. <laughs> so, so we got to here, we got to here, I've made the connection, I've got his hips, I've got him halfway over, and bang my hips in. You bang your hips in, the feet will come off the ground, and you'll bear in mind you've already half turned him, so it's like getting your feet took out from under you when you're leaning back like that. Does anyone want to see that again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're here, we're here, put it in. It's crucial for this to work that your legs are either side of this leg. If his leg comes out behind me, you do not have this throw anymore. I mean, you have other things, but we'll go into that. So, we're here, we're here, and then I'm, I start folding him. Bang! <laughs> and you can be. If you really go for that, if you proper chuck it, so like, go 50% of this, because if you chuck this in, you'll put the guy through the mat, and you land on top of him every time as well. One thing to be conscious of is as you're, as you're, as you bang your hips in, as you're going down, remove your hands from under you, because otherwise what will happen is, is you'll land on your own grip, possibly break your own fingers, or even worse, if that's underneath his spine when he hits the ground, um, big trouble. Yeah. So as you go, yeah. So look, as, as we're going, just because we're being like, if, we, if this was a real match, leave him in there and, and let him take the damage. But um, so we're here. So we're here. Bang my hips in, and I'm going to remove my hands and just let him let him make his own break fall. You see? Cool. Everyone good? Yeah. Um, let him try with your hips. So just by virtue of you banging your hips in, you will. You bring your legs into it, but I'm not, I'm not doing like that. It's just a little, yeah? Just the sound effect completely. <laughs> but um, if you catch this on someone in competition, as you hit, throw in the hip bump, you can create rotation with your arms. Bear in mind, you've got a, you've got a body floating in the air. It takes no strength. It's, it's just creating extra rotation with your arms. You'd be looking to dump them on the back of their head as opposed to in a place where they can break from. So I'll, I'll semi do this because it's steam and you're making it. Yeah, but I'm here, but boom, rotation. See the rotation? Boom. We'll follow him down to uh, this. Yeah, see that here. So, we're starting it. You've got him Would you? That hand that's over the top, would you kind of throw him down on the way down as well? It's not just dropping. Well, yeah, yeah, in reality, what I'm doing is, but, so here I'm landing nicely because it is. <coughs> the reality is, on this throw, I will land and I will drop my shoulder through him because the impact of landing is, is one thing, but the impact of landing with something else coming through you at the same time is completely different. That's a, you, that, it, you know, it, it breaks ribs, it hurts people a lot. We don't want to do that to each other here today. But yes, with, if you, if someone was threatening your family, <laughs> then absolutely land and drive your shoulder straight through. Um, a really good example of this, I'll show you how much of it, how much of it. but if you watch, um, it's a really old fight, Randy Couture and Gabriel Gonzaga, he does this. He, he, ta he takes him down almost with the exact same takedown, but as he's coming down onto him, he keeps his head pinned to Gonzaga's face, and so Gonzaga's head lands on the mat and Randy Couture's head just goes boom, straight through it like, it's like landing with a brick on top of you already. It just breaks in. So that, in every pro in wrestling, that is, would be what we're looking to do. We put the guy down, but as, we, as he goes down, we're going through at the same time. Okay? Cool. Uh, so, next thing. If you ever roll with anyone that's even wrestled slightly, they will know that this is a very, very bad spot. And the first reaction they will do is try and get their leg and hip out, so try and uh, big back step with Right, no, no, back step with this leg. So, we're here, he knows that he's in a bad spot. Get your leg out, let's get your leg out. That's it. Can you see that? Once his leg gets past the back of my legs, that throw's no longer available to me. So if he's got me, um, if he's got me, here he's got the throw, here he doesn't have it. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
Because if he, if he bumps his hips, he's bumping nothing here. It's just... <laughs> it's just being weird. It's all on video. <laughs> Highlight reel is going to be so awesome. So this... <laughs> so, so this will be the first reaction. You'll get it. Sometimes you won't even get this far. Sometimes, once you've got a higher look and you get the angle, he knows what's coming next, so his, his leg will step back out. Yeah? But let's imagine we've got it from here. We're here. He, he doesn't want to be put, right, cool. So he's put his leg back out. Okay, same time. Right, so he's here. Can you see that big space? There's a whole big space in between us. Um, for the judo, classic jiu-jitsu people, I want you to understand this is not a hip throw. What I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this grip here, and then I'll stick my hip in the way, and I'm just going to turn him like a clock in a very jerky motion. Does that make sense? So it's not a big, beautiful, wah, one movement. It's not that. It's just, I've got him here, he's pulled his leg out, I don't have it anymore, but I can get my hip in, and jerk, 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 and he goes. It's like an ugly hip throw, but it's super effective, and it's really, really difficult to stop someone doing that to you. So what we're going to do, from here, he gets his hip back, I come in, I put my hip to his now, and I'm just going to jerk him around me, keep turning like a clock, and I can keep going for as long as I need to. Keep following, following. He'll go. I'm sort of ragdolling. I am ragdolling, but I've got all the points of control, because I have his hip, I have my hip in the way, and in the absence of being able to do a big, beautiful hip throw, I'm just going to keep my hip in the way, next to his hip. So this, this connection, my hip, his hip, my hand, that stays all the time. And if this stays all the time, he can't follow me as fast as I can turn. Ooh. Does that make sense? <laughs> so that connection between your hip, their hip, basically making a their hip sandwich. Is that cool? <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three. Josh Koscheck would go for this again and again and again, and he would turn it into a double sometimes as well. But basically what I'm doing is I've got my own hook, I've got control of his base here, I'm, I'm starting him leaning that way, I'm just going to make sure that this doesn't fall, because if I don't tap the knee and I go, place that, see how it comes with it, his base comes with him. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop that from going to. And you should land inside control. Uh, just one really important thing with the knee tap. I'm not running through him, I'm running past him. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And um, it might not happen in one step. So if he's resisting a bit, it might take a few. But I can sprint forward faster than he can move sideways. If I'm stopping his knee from coming, that's how the knee tap works. It's fast, it's dynamic. Yeah? Do you not apply that much pressure to the knee tap? Don't need it. Don't need it. All I need is enough pressure to stop. Yeah. Think about how much... Yeah. Come stand here. Nice. Come stand here. With my left hand, my weak, it's my weak hand. Move your leg out to the side. Come on. Am I using really any force? No. no. It's, this, this, this is so fucking weak. Like, yeah. This movement here, and just a little bit of pressure here, will stop it from being able to go. This is a really, really weak movement to do. Try it with weights or a resistance band or something. It's really hard. So literally just a tap. I'm not trying to sweep it from under him. I'm just stopping it going. And then I run past them. So let's be real. Let's be smart about this. Um, just to recap again, uh, just to recap again, this is when we end up in this over-unders battle. And this will happen. You will get into this over-unders battle. More often than not, you will end up in this over-unders battle with someone who knows what you're doing. If you end up in this fight, it means the guy knows what he's doing a little bit, yeah? So, but our sequence is high underhook, head to the same side, expect the thing. Then we've got our options, which are knee tap, bring him in, hip bump, over to the side, um, or you might step out, collect the hip, turn, turn, turn. Well, we've got a series of things that we can do from there, yeah? Any way he goes, we have an option. Do we feel good about that? It's going to take time and drilling, but do we feel good about that? Yes. yes. Okay, cool. So here's the next thing, and this is the, this is the worst one. I, I don't understand why. I think there's something programmed in human DNA to, uh, to make us behave this way. 
<laughs> it's so good, it's so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen so many nogi fights start like this. You've seen that before. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the collar ties are legit position, but everything about the way that humans seem to instinctively do it is wrong. Um, and I think it's come. I, I, I play professional wrestling because they do this, don't they? Mm -hmm. uh, that's wrong. So the first few points about the collar tie are this: it's no good me having his neck. This does not help me one bit at all. Um, keep your neck strong. That's full strength. That's, there's no point in having his neck. I need the back of his head because I need to be able to control his head going up and down. I can't do it from here. Keep your neck strong. Much, much, much easier. It doesn't take any effort at all. And the higher up his head I go, if I'm here, that's quite difficult. If I'm here, the stuff is out. I can do whatever I want. Anytime I'm trying to stuff a takedown or whatever else, I'm not looking for the neck, I'm looking for the highest point on the head that I can safely grab because that will allow me to impact that. Second thing about that, when you end up in this, in this two-man collar tie, where do it just tie it like you normally would, when you end up in this, see where Dean's arm is, where it just naturally went to? See his left hand? Yeah, you see where it naturally went to? On top of my arm. It was, I can't do anything with it on top of it. All I'm going to be able to, all I'm going to be able to do with having this on top of his arm is pull down on the structure that's pulling on my head. I can't move his arm anywhere by being on top of it. All I'm doing is adding weight to the structure that's on top of my head. But still, no matter what, everyone seems to just go like this instinctively. So I'm going high up the head. Instead of going, um, instead of holding onto this, I'm going to cut underneath the tricep. At least from here, I can, I can move it, I can do things with it, and I'm going to cut the <coughs> tricep. Does that make sense? So let's just get used to the collar type position a little bit. Ask your mate. Um, so if, uh, if I, I'm going to ask Dean, uh, Dean, keep your head strong. I'm going to try and, try and move it. It means I'm in the right place. Dean, keep your head strong. It means I'm in the wrong place. I'm in the right place. Keep this tight cup on the, on the, uh, on the bottom of the tricep here. And this must be a tight grip. Keep that there, yeah? Is that cool? One, two, three. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not holding it. I've got a grip of it. When he goes for it, boom, then it comes up. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Alright, and similarly, I'm looking for those moments where Dean takes the pressure off, where I feel that he's not got it, then boom. That's hand fighting, and that's and that's the difference. It's not like key grips, and mine, that's it, I've got them. <laughs> Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Can you just okay. do a couple of seconds of that hand fighting again? Because I didn't record it, sorry, my bad. <laughs> okay, cool. So one open hand, he's got a grip, he's got to control his hand. I've got to control this hand. And again, I'm going to try and stay loose. And when he moves for something, then I use my pressure on the hand fight. And we're just going to try and touch each other's heads. And then we, slaps might happen. <laughs> you really want to do this combat jiu-jitsu thing, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, cheers, Sandy. Oh god, here we go. Hopefully you get the point about hand fighting is that you take a grip and you just follow the hand and when it feels like it's going somewhere where you don't want it to, that's when you exert the pressure. And that's all we're gonna be doing. But that's gonna be important in a little while. So we're gonna go back to our collar type position, our, uh, our two-man collar type position which happens. So Assume, let's assume he knows what I know now. He knows to control my head. He knows to, um, he knows to grab from the bottom of the tricep. The, the next thing that I have to consider in my series of events is where this elbow is. And this elbow is crucial because depending on where he puts it dictates where my opportunity is. Does that make sense? Cool. So in fact, let's go the other way so the camera can see. So the first one is, and this is what will happen a lot, is because someone's trying to impact your head and they need like a leverage point, that means the elbow's going in, my elbow's going into his collarbone and that creates a point for me to, and he might be doing the same thing, right? So elbow inside, that's the point. The elbow's inside my shoulder, yeah? What we're gonna do from here is we're gonna go into what's called a Russian two-on-one. And this is 
like a whole system. There are wrestlers that their whole game is built on this one position. And the Russian two on one is as simple as this. I'm going to reach across, grab his arm, and with my shoulder, this is really important, my shoulder, I'm going to go through his elbow joint this way. The impact of the shoulder is extremely important. If there's no shoulder impact, you will not get this two on one. Here. And there should be like a mini arm bar y type feeling there too. Um, I'm going to cut this, and again, if he straightens out his arm, I've got like arm bar y type pressure I can put on him. If he tries to tuck it in tight, um, then I've still got it. But the point is, um, I'm controlling one whole side of his body now with all my weapons. Again, coming back to weapon refactor, if I decide I want to, I can get under his jawbone. But the crucial thing is that my head is always stays this side of his head. If he gets his head to the other side, now just try and push me off, he straightens up. Yeah? My head must stay this side. So, it takes a collar tie, this time the elbow's in tight. Yeah? It, it's, it's inside my shoulder. Elbow's inside my shoulder, reach across, big impact with the shoulder, and my shoulder's going through his elbow. I'm trying to create like an Americana type uh, pressure. Because it's the, it's the Americana type pressure that would get the hand off your head. If he keeps his hand strong, and I, it's not, it's not going to work. The hand's going to be stuck on my head. I'm not going to get it. I have to, I have to bang it. Yeah, my head always inside. Which means that exactly what just what Dean just did. If he goes low, no with him. If he comes up high, it's stuck to him. Is that cool? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, one, two, three. The point of what we just did isn't to, um, isn't to get the hand on your head. The hand on your head, if you're both in that collar type position, actually isn't doing you much harm. The point is not to get the hand off your head. The point is to get to the Russian two-on-one. Because from the Russian two-on-one, there's a million very, very nice things that you could, bad things you could do to your partner. So, um, just to recap, uh, we're in position here. The elbow's on the inside. So, the elbow's on the inside, boom, pressure to on one. Now I'm here. We're gonna keep it really simple because like, this is like open guard. There's a billion different variations. You could spend your whole career just going over stuff from here. We're gonna stay with the really simple ones. And um, the simplest one is this, to start with. I'm gonna drag him to me. Right, just stay up, stay up, stay up. I'm going to drag him to me, but watch his feet, watch what happens with his feet. Right, can you sit? And now I'm putting weight through his shoulder, I'm putting weight through this, this Americana guitar, un uncomfortable position. This foot is planted, it cannot move. If he tries to move it now, he will just fall flat. I'm trying to move your foot. He can't. If he moves it, it's, it's, the, it's the only thing that's keeping him standing up. And because, it's, because he can't move it, it makes it a really easy target to grab. Oh, come in for singles. We're not going to go into variations of how you finish single leg takedowns. What I'm going to say is, when we get here, I plant his foot. Now I know he can't move it. Come in, grab it high, and hug it to the chest. But when people lose single leg takedowns is when they've got them out there. Just hug it in tight to you, and the guy will probably just fall anyway. Yeah? Is that cool? Mm -hmm. Ask your partner though, when you get here and you've got your two on one and you don't ask you to move, move your front foot. <laughs> if, they, if they giggle or laugh or basically if, if any situation occurs where they can't move that front leg, then great. And I'm not letting go of the arm to get the leg, I'm driving the arm into the leg. Dead catch you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just because I don't want them to have that split second to be able to use their arm again. Yeah? Is that cool? One, two, three. Yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> so, if we have time, we'll go over some more two on Russian two on one stuff. I'm just conscious about how much time we've actually got left, um, and I haven't got for even like ten minutes. <laughs> so, but anyway, so we're here. so we talked about we talked about what to happen when the when the elbow's on the inside. 
Anyone who's wrestled will be very, very conscious of this Russian two on one because it's a really horrible. Uh, sorry, there's a fly. I'm not uh, it's a really, really horrible spot to be in, and, and, and all kinds of really bad things can happen to you from that spot. So the reality is, no one's ever going to put their elbow in like that to try, like, because it's just too easy for me to. So imagine one here, and his elbow's mildly inside. What if I just start bugging him for the two on one? He's going to lift it. And if he lifts it, he gives me something else. Good duck on So everything that happens from that collar tie is going to be about the relative position of where that elbow is. And it's not just his decision to make where he puts his elbow. He might put it there. Um, he might put it out wide and I start looking for duck under. He brings it back in. Like there's, a, there's a whole game going on here. Just, I might start plugging it and he starts lifting it up. Oh. But the relative elbow position is, is the important thing. So, if it's inside my shoulder, basically if I can feel it anywhere on my pec, I'm in prime time Russian two-on-one territory. If I can feel it start moving up towards my shoulder, <coughs> I'm in prime time duck under te uh, territory. So, let me just explain the points of the duck under. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to use his head like a monkey bar and hang off it. This isn't me with my legs lowering my weight, this is me hanging off his head. I'm going to go to one knee and at the same time I'm going to, remember we had this grip here, he's going to pop his elbow up and it's like, um, it's like rolling a punch in boxing. I'm not looking to go miles underneath it, just want to squeeze my head through under his armpit. That's it, because that's the, it's, it's harder for him to block that. So his elbow's a bit high, and I'll do it in slow motion, even though it's not really a slow motion thing. Pop, under, and as I come down, all my weight is on the From that, uh, that grip? Yeah, yeah. I'm, just, I'm just hanging off that. So it's as if, all of a sudden, he was carrying the, <laughs> he was carrying the strength of my bicep and my wrist, and now he's carrying my whole body weight through his head. Yeah. Just one more time quickly. So we're here, arms <coughs> up high, I'm there, there for And what I'm looking to achieve is maybe he doesn't go to the ground, stay really strong in the legs. Maybe he doesn't go to the ground. I'm looking to achieve this head and arm triangle position. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And from here, again, <coughs> really, really cool stuff. Mm -hmm. but, but catching the duck under is the most important thing. Ask your partner to, um, to feel if, if their weight was impact. If you do it properly, with the pressure on the head and the pressure just, again, and this, is a, this isn't a push, this is a bang. Same as, the, same as the hip thrust, same as the shoulder, it's a bang. Bang. There should be almost no way to stop it if he's put his elbow in the wrong position. Is that cool? Yes. One, two, three. So if I really drop it on you, you're quite heavy. Yeah, you're sorry. I've sworn. Yeah, you're fucked. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so before we go into um, move transitioning that into some leg attacks, um, again I just want to explain some misconceptions about the defence for leg attacks, um, specifically what I call lines of defence. So if you were if you were an army general, you'd set your army out in a way that your lines of defence. To get to the next one, you have to break the first one, right? So you might have your infantry at the front and then the cavalry behind them and then the archers behind them and then that concept exists in wrestling, um, particularly when it comes to defending your hips uh, and defending against leg takedowns. So, again, I'm going. Um, so if you look at my posture, the, in order of the, their closeness to, uh, to Dean, that, those are my lines of defence. So my first one is my head. So if me and Dean are wrestling and he's trying to take, he's trying to 
just to have a little play, try and do some. If you get good at using your first line of defence, which is your head, they, they can't even get started. My next line of defence is my shoulders. So assuming it gets past my head, I'll keep my head up way, have a little way. Shoulders. You can do a lot of damage with them, right? Trust me. Um, and again, in wrestling it's not a striking art, but if you've got to give things a bang to get them moving, like it's less fun. Right? And, and it's the same in Nogi as well, like no one's going to call you for a strike if he starts coming in forward and trying to pick. And I'm just using my shoulders to. You get know what I'm saying? So shoulders. Next line of defence, hands. So my hand, then this is where a lot of people go wrong. They use their hands first and they're neglecting to use their head and their shoulders. Once you get good at this, play with someone that hasn't really wrestled much before. You, they won't, if you just use your head, they won't get near you. They won't be able to do anything to you. So, but only once he's got past my head and my shoulders do my hands then come into place. So if we have a little play, get past my head and my shoulders. Yeah. Now I can start using my hands. He's past my head and past my shoulders. Now I start using my hands. Yeah? Next line of defence. Elbows. So, hypothetically, he's come in, he's got past my head, he's got past my shoulders, he's got past my hands, elbows. Or forearms, whatever you say, sort of thing. But forearms, keep having a little play. I'll let you get past all of this. And then my final line of defence, believe it or not, is the actual thing that he's trying to get to my hips. Um, so, just shoot the tape down. I can use my hips to bang into him. Uh, shoot across the double leg. I can give him lots and lots of trouble with my hips. And it's not just from... Because bear in mind, he's trying to get control of them, but at the same time, if I just leave them where they are, he gets them. So I'm not trying to get him away from him, I'm trying to bang him into him. I once saw, um, at a wrestling class about 10 years ago, this, um, to be fair, he's a big lad. This Nigerian guy, um, someone shot on him, and he just went bang and took the guy's shoulder clean out, just with a hip ball. So, what, where the problem will come, is if you shoot again, I try to get away from him. Do you see the difference? And this happens all the time in jiu-jitsu. Someone gets past all the lines of defence, they take a shot, and I'm like, I'm going to hit one. He's got what he wants. If he takes a shot again, and I'm using my hips, <coughs> puts a real heavy impact into that. So lines of defence, head, shoulders, hands, elbows, and hips. So when you're defending, when you're starting off, <coughs> when you're starting off a, an OG match, and um, do you think the guy's likely to try and take you down? Start playing lines of defence. Let's go. Let's go. Have a little play. Shoulders, man. Shoulders. Shoulders. And get past my shoulders. Hands. Hands. Get past my hands. Elbows. Elbows. Look how much work he's got to do to get in the back. But you need to understand that the guy must be made to go through every line of defence. You just let him, you stop doing all this and that's, that's how you lose the war, right? Aren't you in danger of like somebody doing a jumping guillotine attack when you stick your head out like that? So, I was doing that for dramatic effect just to use my sure. head. Normally you wouldn't just leave your head lying out like that. But it would be the first, the first thing in his way. The other thing is my arms are tucked in tight. We teach um, in wrestling T-Rex arms. So your arms are always in like little T-Rex arms. So the reality would be that so if we have a proper, have a proper plan. This one. If you get a team there, take it. <laughs> but he can't get past my head, that's the point. You can play with it, you can push it around. If he gets past my head, he can't get past my shoulders. I've given him five different <coughs> I think five, <laughs> five problems to have to deal with before he can think about trying to attack my legs. 
that make sense? Absolutely. Similarly, from an attacking point of view, bear in mind that those are the lines of defence, even if the other guy doesn't know it. So if he comes into you like, uh, go past his head, go pat under his shoulders, go past his arm, past his elbows, and get straight to his head. I was going to say, like, your first line of defence is your head. What about if his first attack is just a dive for the single loop? I mean, you're not going to get your head down to... Yeah. yeah. But, no, that's what you know, that's a good point. What if he lowers his level quick yeah. enough to get... If he gets past my head, then my shoulder will get in the way. And if he gets past my shoulder, then my elbow will get in the way. And if he gets past my elbow, then my hip will get in the way. Do you get what I'm saying? But wherever he is, I know what he's past already. If he's, if he's here, elbows. If he's here, shoulders. If he's here, head. If he's here, hands. <coughs> if he's here, hips. I already know what he's past and I know what I've got left. And that same thing we're talking about sequence of events, the same way on the way out, so if he gets all the way to my legs, and he's got to my hips, my same sequence on the way out. So what was it? Hips, elbows, hands, shoulders, head. I brought it back to replenish my lines of defence. Is that cool? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's just, um, this can get a little bit bloody at times, so be real careful. But let's just do that. Have a little play with your partner. One of you's going to just, again, don't go full speed. One of you's just going to attack. The other one is going to first start by um, just using the head as a line of defence. And then once he gets past the head, where is he? Shoulders. Shoulders. Get the head back in the way. So stop that. It's a really, really important skill. Is that cool? One, two, three. I'm looking to show you anything else that's going to be of any use. But um, if we just do a quick recap from sort of the day's, um, day's action. So we started here. We've got our permanent position. We know we want to get a high underhook. We want to get to the inside. If possible, get to the hips. We've got a big sweep there. Take the guy steps back, connection here, and jerk, 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 drag him over. If I've got my high underhook, I can also go for a knee tap and run straight through him, through him, sorry, run straight past him. So there's a, that's a whole sequence of stuff that we can get. But the point is, always know when you're in this position, always know what the other guy probably doesn't know, which is actually, I need my underhook really high and I need my head in here. Completely change the game. Too many people just accept this because they think it's normal. It's not normal at all. Right, so we've got that. We've got our collar tie position. We've got to remember controlling the head under the arm, then we're on top. And we've got all the different things depending on where his elbow goes. His elbow comes inside. Boom, brush two on one. We've got one finish. But if you if you want to, if anyone's genuinely interested in this stuff, ask me up and have a work if you want it, or check out YouTube and just type in Russian two on one finishes. <coughs> You'll be, there'll be five billion videos. <laughs> but we've got our basic one here where we immobilise the leg with pressure. Come in at the table. So there's one. Similarly, if the elbow starts drifting outwards because it doesn't like the Russian two on one, we've got the bang and the pull and the button. From here, I was going to show you uh, some techniques on here, but um, from here, basically, the world is your oyster. You're on the guy's back. If he tries to turn back in, he's going straight into a standing head and arm, which will finish him. You drag him around anywhere you like. From here, basically, if you, if you don't manage to get the guy to the floor, like, just don't come back. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, we haven't got any time to show techniques like that on that set. Um, we've probably got five or ten minutes left for sparring if anyone wants to have a little nogi roll. Um, but uh, I, I hope you've enjoyed today. I rushed things a great deal. So. One looks a little bit like a political protest. <laughs> <laughs>